Hi, I'm here with uh, Avraham, and Avraham's a special patient for our practice because he's been living with keratoconus for a few years and has actually had two different types of cross-linking treatments. So I was hoping he could just talk a little bit about his experience with the condition more broadly. Um, he is currently in medical school, so he has uh, a little bit more than your average knowledge of, of medical conditions and anatomy. I guess just tell us a little bit about you know what your life was like uh, when you first got diagnosed with keratoconus and just living with the condition more broadly. A few years ago, I was diagnosed with keratoconus because I kept progressing in my vision loss and my glasses just weren't cutting it and my optometrist kind of had a suspicion about it and then you know, referred me to uh, an ophthalmologist. Um, they diagnosed with keratoconus and then I was kind of given the options as far as cross-linking to reduce the progression um, or just kind of going with the hard contact lenses, which was a couple different types. First I tried the small ones, the RGP ones, they were they didn't really work great for me. So eventually we decided that we would do the scleral lenses, but before that, figured that the cross-linking would make sense to just reduce the progression. Um, and I was kind of given the options as far as the Epi On, which is kind of the, the, the easier one, um, but it's not FDA approved in the US. So it's a little more challenging to for doctors to, to perform it as far as I understand. It's a little more like experimental. But that's what we went with because being in medical school it was like the schedule was tough. So we just wanted to kind of have a quick recovery and not spend, you know, a week or so kind of off. Did the epithelium on a couple years ago in this office um, and it, it was easy. Procedure wasn't painful and the recovery was just kind of that night with some discomfort, but that was it. Um, we knocked out both eyes and then I did the scleral lenses and they worked fantastically. My vision was basically normal again with the, with the hard scleral lens, which are kind of a bigger version of the RGP smaller ones. And then over the next couple of years, it was sort of still progressing a little bit. So we decided, you know, especially when I'm wanting to, I'm going to medicine, it's, my eyes are pretty important. So decided we would need to repeat the cross-linking to try to really halt the progression. Um, and at that point, we figured the conventional epi-off approach, which has been FDA approved in the US, I don't know how long, but um, that that's kind of the more surefire approach. So we went with that. And we just finished with that a few days ago. As far as the procedure itself, it was kind of the same. It wasn't really, there really wasn't discomfort during the procedure, it's really, it's easy. I mean, do it in the office, but um, there were a couple of days where it was like, it was fairly uncomfortable uh, with the eyes that you take pain medicine, you kind of sleep it off and you get some light sensitivity, which I still have some of, but it's getting better. And you get some blurry vision for a few days, which is resolving. So it, as long as it stops the progression, that's like all I care about. So I'm doing this kind of more conventional approach, I think makes sense. Yeah, exactly. So he gave a really excellent overview of the challenges of keratoconus with regards to visual, um, achievement and visual acuity. Because of the irregular nature of the astigmatism, we see that the way that the curvature of the cornea is, it's uneven versus the top and bottom half. So glasses where the lenses kind of address refractive error uniformly throughout the nature of the lens don't work for patients with irregular astigmatism like keratoconus. So Abraham really suffered with just not getting that visual, requisite visual sharpness with glasses and required RGPs, which were not quite comfortable, and ultimately sparrows. Cross-linking, uh, as he mentioned, is simply a way to just halt the progression or slow the progression um, by creating cross-links within the collagen of the cornea. So it's a process of applying riboflavin, a specialized solution that enters into the corneal stroma or the tissues where the collagen lives, and then UV light at a certain wavelength to kind of stimulate uh, those proteins to interact uh, more intimately and prevent this kind of gradual kind of denaturing and loosening of the collagen fibers. At the on, which is what we went through as an experimental method initially, is just an easier procedure. It's uh, kind of a higher wattage of light for a shorter duration without removing the epithelium. And the reason why we went with that is because that's kind of been a, um, uh, a mainstay of treatment outside of the US for many years. And while the efficacy is a little bit lower, the quality of life is so much better in that immediate short term, and even visual recovery is quicker as well, that for his situation in med school, it just made sense. Unfortunately, over the last six months, we did see some progression on his serial topography and tomography, so we realized we needed to do something else. And instead of trying the same thing again, which probably would have worked, we found patients that subsequent treatments, even with that beyond, you would do very well. Um, we, we now have access to epi and we said, why not just 
do it the, the way that you know we, we probably need to at this point. There are more restrictions with that be off. The cornea has to be above a certain thickness and he was kind of right at that border. Um, so this was the time to do it. And as he mentioned, just the discomfort. So you had your procedure done on Wednesday. Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, we did one day apart. Um, and how did that work out for you? Obviously, initially we did it both uh, the same day, but but splitting it up, was that something that um, was a big inconvenience for you? Was I actually thought the separating it one day at a time was helpful because the, I think the worst of it is within the first 24 hours. And this way I still sort of get to just deal with this kind of headache for a week and then kind of be done with it as opposed to, I kind of, I, I don't like the idea of having done this and then taking, something to take like a week off and then coming back and doing the other. But so I think actually that one day apart is, is actually perfect. Perfect, I think that's yeah. probably gonna be our our, our protocol moving forward, I think that does make the most sense. It allows us to give the patient that extra day of you know useful vision of the non-treated eye without prolonging and delaying that weak recovery because it really does take about a week each eye. So if we can overlap by a day or two, I think that that is um, that is, is a good yeah. thing. I'm glad that that worked out for you. Of course, Rahab actually doesn't live here, um, you know, full time here in this area. So we had to work around his travel schedule. So we really appreciate him coming down to, to get this treatment with us. And then once his cornea remains stable, which we expect it to be, um, then we can revisit those contact lens solutions. Yeah. Um, there's other treatments as well, like CTAC or corneal inlays that have been developed in the last year that, you know, I think will really also provide some additional options so he's not, you know, confined to those special contact lenses. But Kericonis is, uh, he's a young, healthy guy. He's uh, the top of his game in med school right now, and this is something that can affect anyone at, at really any age, but it really does affect younger people more broadly. So it's important to get checked out with your eye doctor, and if you're not feeling like your glasses prescription is quite hitting the mark, then doing some additional tests that might not be part of your routine eye exam could help uncover conditions like keratoconus um, that can ultimately save you uh, of a future of you know visual compromise and an ultimate visual quality um, if it's not cut early enough. So getting cross-linked as early as you can is essential to delay the progression and preserve the vision that, that you have. So we thank you for trusting us and thank wish you yeah. best of luck. And uh, here we are a few days out, his contacts are out. We put in bandage contacts as a you know, short-term solution just to help with that comfort. And uh, he's doing very well. He's healing beautifully, very, very quickly. Um, and just a couple of days is his comfort and then he should be on his way. So, That's any true. final thoughts? No, I mean, I, I hope I can provide an update on the, in the long term. And, and uh, yeah, no, That's perfect. Absolutely. Perfect, we hope to do that. Well, thanks yes. again for your time. Of course, thank All right. you. Yes. Cool. No,